You know, I've done a lot of Sonic stuff on here. I wonder what other Sega franchises I can make videos on. Oh uh, yeah, Monkey Ball. Do I even own any of those games? I actually like this one. And I can understand why others don't. It's, it's not as interesting as its predecessors. So, let's make it interesting, eh? Is it possible to beat Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD without bananas? Obviously, the goal of this challenge is to complete the game without collecting any bananas, but I decided to make this a little more entertaining. Unlike the other games in the series, every character in Banana Blitz has their own unique stats. For instance, Ai Ai is the all-arounder, while Baby is incredibly small and light. After looking over everybody, I've come to the conclusion that Gon Gon will be the most difficult one to use for this challenge. He is the biggest, the slowest, and the heaviest. We don't want this to be too easy, so we will primarily be playing as him. However, if it seems impossible to complete a level with our new protagonist, then we'll swap to a different simian just to ease the pain ever so slightly. Also, I'll be using the Xbox One version. And as usual, it's on actual hardware, so no save states or any of that jazz. So with everything out, let's begin our adventure in World 1, Monkey Island. 1-1 is a straight path with a line of bananas down the middle. No need to worry though, all we have to do is hug the wall. Even someone of Gon Gon stature can squeeze through. 1-2 is not only longer, but skinnier. Not all of the obstacles can be avoided by hugging the wall this time. So, it's time to bust out our secret weapon. And by that, I mean the main thing that alienates Blitz from the other games. Jumping. I know, one of the basic functions of the game. This is another stat that differentiates between characters, and of course, Gon Gon gets the short end of the stick. Lucky for us, he can leap over the fruits easily, making this level possible. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if this bites us in the butt further down the line. 1-3 is 1-1 with a light elevation. Nothing to say about 4 and 5, but 6 is where things start heating up. I try jumping in between the bananas, but we can't really do that because of how steep the bridge is. So instead, let's jump on the railing and try to stay aligned with it as we make our way down. The key word is try, but if something like this happens, that's totally fine. Do this for the second bridge and the level is ours. 1-7 existed, so on to 1-8. This course has a number of birds that propel gusts of wind towards us. The first birdie was no trouble since the path was wide. The second one is a little tricky since we have to hop over the fruit while trying to stay on the path. As we jump over the banana before the bird, hold the analog stick to the top right corner, and that should work out. The last two are right next to each other, and I swear their flapping is much more powerful than the other two. My plan was to build up enough speed, jump into the third bird's current by holding to the top left, then, just as we approach the fourth bird, push it to the top right. I tried this tactic out for about 30 minutes, with unsuccessful results. But, within that time frame, I started noticing something. We are more likely to get thrown around when we stay in the air for too long. So, if we take smaller hops, we can land on the ground faster, giving us more control. So, let's just take the original plan and use some short hops. With 30 more minutes of attempts, we finally get this one run where the stars align and we just barely hang on with the skin of our teeth. And just for reference, this level is much... Much easier with Baby, since he's small enough to squirm between everything. But, you know, we can't just diss the star of the video like that, you know what I'm saying? It might be more difficult, but it might not be impossible. He just has to work a little harder for those Ws. To finish off World 1, there's a boss battle against Feather Duster. Who features no bananas? Hello, uh, post-production mod here. It's been a hot minute since I've played this game, and I completely forgot about the golden bananas we get from defeating the bosses, uh, so in case anybody is wondering about them, they will not count since we can't actually control what's happening in the cutscenes. We are only worried about the ones in the gameplay. Alright, we cool? Alright, we cool. Let's go. Now onto the second world, Jumble Jungle. Hi everyone, post-production mod again, uh, 
I'll just save y'all some time. I, I did all of them on my first try, so, uh... Smooth Sherbert. 3-1 is a piece of cake. In 3-2, all the nanners are suspended in the air, so we can roll around at the speed of sound. 3-3 is laughably short. Then there's 3-4. This is the perfect time to show off... Really the only benefit of playing Gon Gon. See, when the other monkeys interact with a bumper, they get sent flying. Mr. G straight up destroys them by merely touching them. However, there is a downside to this perk. Depending on how fast we're moving will still determine how much knockback we take from colliding with the bumpers. It is extremely minimal, especially compared to the rest of the cast, but our boy is still an absolute unit. We don't want to accidentally slide next to a banana. After every bridge, there's a big batch of bumpers accompanied by some bananas rotating in a circle. After the first one, jump in between two of the bumpers. For two, slowly walk into an oncoming bumper, get rid of the others, then jump to the third bridge and do the same thing. For the last section, jump over the banana and land at the edge of the circle. Then we can easily make our way to the goal. Oh yeah, I um, almost forgot about the bonus stages. Ready? Yeah, we can just remain idle for all of these. 3-5 almost had us. There's potassium sausages atop spinning wood. The first three were easy, and the fourth one should have been challenging since there's two bananas instead of one. But the other side of the path is so close, even Gon Gon can jump across. Six was pitiful, and seven had a bunch of snowballs. 8 is a rather lengthy level to complete in 60 seconds. To make this easier on ourselves, jump off the right side before the second set of torches to land on a later part of the level to shave off about 15-20 seconds. That way we can peacefully avoid the food and reach the end. The boss, Abomin Orangutan, also features no bananas. Leaving the Winter Wonderland, we arrive at Detritus Desert. 4-1, 4-2, and 4-3 were a walk in the park. 4-4 has some little craters that we can use to schmoove our way over. 4-5 introduces us to the boost pads. They work just like how they do in Sonic games. All the yellow fruits are in the middle, so just stay on the left or right side. After using the last boost pad, turn towards the goal to enter it. 6 has some mechanical swings with a single banana in the center. Although it is a bit close, G-Dog can just barely fit without collecting it. At the end, there is a set of three swings. Very important not to hit the corners while leaping over, otherwise we'll bounce in the middle. I would recommend short hopping for this part. Seven is long. Uh... Eight has two routes, a short one with numerous bananas and a long one with no bananas. You know, up to this point, it has been a little too easy. Uh... Let's take the dangerous route to make things a little more thrilling. Oh wow, that's all it takes. That took minimal effort. Oh, okay then, well. Technosaur is our next battle, and wouldn't you know it, there's actually stuff to collect. On the third body part, we're forced to find a mole with a button on its head. Once activated, all of the manholes will turn into a buffet, so watch out for that. The fourth body part has two turrets that fire homing missiles. Pressing the button on top is the return to sender input. Once they both implode, two more bananas appear. After that is a gauntlet of turrets that are not mandatory to defeat, so scurry all the way to the end to hit the big pink button. After this guy, none of the other bosses contain any delicious treats, so we don't have to discuss them. Coming up next, Pirate's Ocean. 5-1 not only has enemies that hog up tiny platforms, but there's also a very short and skinny staircase with horribly placed bananas. At the beginning of each step, jump over the banana and land on the opposite side. But don't go too far, or else we'll rebound off the corner and collect something we don't want. I, I know this part looks easy, but it literally took me like 40 minutes to do. There's barely enough space to work with. 5-2 is a 2-minute level that takes 100 seconds to complete. 
Uh, for 5-3, just stick to the left or right side. 4 through 7 were like watching paint dry. 8 contains two large spirals we have to climb. The bananas on the ground can't really be jumped over, so instead, jump closer to the inner ring to avoid them. As for the ones placed before a divergence, hop over the forbidden fruit, but don't try to clear the gap. Our primate pal is unable to make those kinds of hops. Other than those, the level is ours. And finishing this spooky location is Octopocus. Insert a monkey pun for the transition of Cobalt Cavern. Oh, pfft. <laughs> Lol. 6-1 begins with a cluster of floating green pads. Uh, these are mainly used to get banana bunches, so it's best to fall to the area beneath. Once down there, there is a long stretch of boost pads with fruit in the middle. If we travel on the left side, we will bump into a mushroom, which will bring us failure. Stay to the right, then repeatedly jump to steadily clamber up the slope. There's a small gap we have to clear, and right as we land, pull back on the stick to slow down. After maneuvering through the boost pad and banana, stay on the right side again, and we can make our way to the goal. 2 and 3 were... uneventful. For the majority of 6-4, we need to cruise the outer edges of the platform. When we're not doing that, we need to vault over some turning panels. Be warned, the second time we do this, the green sides are covered in produce. On the second lowest platform, wait for the green sides to start turning, jump on over, then quickly scamper across before they turn back. 6-5 is quite the doozy. It consists of three skinny bars filled with food. The first one was a straight line, no trouble with that. The second bar curves multiple times, so it's time to put our insane parkour skills to use. After jumping over the highest banana, land in front of it and jump towards the first curve. Then jump off of that to land in the middle of the middle curve to get to the last plateau. There is a very small window to make contact on the flat surface. Hitting anywhere else, it'll be a mess. The last one is a slide that curves up into the goal. Directly above it is a bunch, so we can't jump at the peak. What if we jump as we slip down? Well, then we won't travel far enough and get the last banana. So then I started thinking outside of the box. What if, instead of stopping, we keep our momentum by bouncing off the plateau to possibly give us the boost we need to reach the goal? While it did give us the distance, it wasn't high enough. So, uh, how about we jump off of one of the mushrooms to give us the height we lack? After, like, over a hundred retries, I gave up on that strategy. Surprisingly, Gon Gon is able to reach that high, but simply getting up there requires too much precision. We need to find an easier way. And lo and behold, we quickly found the path to victory shortly after. While at the back of the plateau, get a running start, jump onto the purple ledge, then jump towards the goal. With a stroke of luck, we will hit the bar right before the final banana, and that will shoot us over it, directly into the goal. Words cannot express the excitement I felt when that happened. 6-6 was just there, so on to 6-7. It's a long road littered with fruits and boost pads. At first, I patiently sprung over everything, but not too long after... Hurry up! Turns out, this stage only gives us 30 seconds to complete it, and we aren't even close to being halfway through. As a little test run, I played this one as intended to see how much extra time we would have, and <laughs> ho ho ho! Gon Gon, sweetheart, you are cutting it way too close to be doing this normally. I, I don't want to do this, but you gotta be swapped out. To maintain our sanity, let's choose Doctor. His jump may be just as terrible, but his speed is absolutely cracked. Again, I casually played the level to see how much time we had to spare, and... Well, that's definitely better. We might have a shot. Hey everyone, post-production mod again. Um, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I've been staying up till 2am for multiple nights attempting this one, and even on the best attempts, we still had a decent way to go. And that's only if everything goes perfectly. The walls are in close proximity to each other, and making contact with them slows us down. Uh, plus, our ball will sometimes bounce over a boost pad that we would need to hit. 
I, I even tried this out with Baby, since his light weight allows us to fling ourselves, but that was even less successful. I mean, look, I'm probably just not good at the game, but I, I don't think there is a way to complete this level without collecting bananas. This is an absolute tragedy, but the video's not stopping. There's still four other worlds after this one, and believe it or not, I'm actually having fun. Uh, let's see if we can overcome the rest of the levels. 6-8 and Baboon Croon were cakewalks, so on to Volcanic Pools. 7-1 was a nice interactive cutscene. 7-2 takes a lot of patience because of how much aligning we have to do. First, we gotta jump on the circle bar and very delicately jump over the bananas. When we reach the opposite side, slowly turn Big G to have him face the straight line, then use it to reach the next platform. Next is a narrow stretch with three consumable objects. With the right timing and correct stability, we can leap over each of them and just barely reach the last platform. Then there's one last line we gotta balance on to reach the end. For 7-3, after the third set of bumps, jump off the edge to take a quick little shortcut directly to the goal. When 7-4 came along, I tried so hard to be a hotshot by taking this massive leap of faith directly into the goal. We were incredibly close on multiple occasions, but we've been at this for over an hour. Although pulling it off would be insanely Gucci, it's better to save up on time by traversing the normal route. 5 and 6 are naturally annoying levels, but thankfully the bananas never got in the way. 7 is very awkward. This level sports a sporadically spinning spiral that must be climbed. Because of how quickly it's moving, we will be pushed to the side if we go too slowly. It ain't easy to regain control when this happens. Not only that, the camera has a mind of its own. It will constantly try to turn in the opposite direction, preventing us from seeing what's in front of us. I did come up with a strategy that works, but only less than 1% of the time. Uh, before entering the spiral, turn slightly to the right. Centering ourselves like this while retaining our speed will make our camera problem faintly less vivacious. Once we enter, jump over the first banana by moving the analog stick forward with a slight drift to the right. Then quickly move the stick to the top left. As we land, slowly move the stick from the top left position to the previous forward right position, then keep repeating that process until we are able to jump into the goal. Don't feel disdained if the camera shifts to a cumbersome angle. Remap the control stick movement to how the path looks on screen. With all this info, we will be able to complete the level. Given time. 7-8 is very similar to 6-7. Uh, the main difference is that there is much less of a time crunch, so this time, we actually stand a chance. The level starts on a quarter pipe, followed by three sets of ramps. Fruit will be floating in the middle, so be off-center when we interact with them. Now, as we use the ramps, watch Gon Gon. If he's spinning inside the ball the entire time, he should be moving fast enough to clear all three of them. If he starts running again, then, well, it's best to just unalive yourself to restart. After the daredevil jumps, we come across a long, thin stretch with boost pads and bananas. Since we had roughly 45 seconds on the timer, I thought we could calmly hop over everything. However, our little Goliath is so slow that we ran out of time. We gotta make use of the boost pads. After landing, skip the first two pads, use the third pad, then jump immediately to avoid the banana and fourth pad. Then jump over the fifth pad and second banana. Use the sixth pad to jump over the third banana and seventh pad. <laughs> God damn, that is the best way I can describe it. And after that, we pretty much repeat the process of use boost pad to jump over banana and boost pad. <laughs> Ending this section is a ramp that leads into the final stretch, which is a long road with zero collectibles. Following this strategy will give us enough time to reach the end. Just for a little comparison, I redid this level as Doctor. Because of his fast movement, we were able to take our time with the middle section. Although we were cutting it very close, it was still much easier to achieve. I think Doc only took like five attempts, while Gon took well over a hundred. Then we beat up the boss, Magimacac. Now, onto the last world of the campaign, Space Case. In 8-1, the only thing to worry about is the beginning strip. First, jump over the three bananas beneath the quarter pipe. After that, the path will start to twist. Jump over the fruit in the middle of the twist. Do the same for the boost pad banana. 
then do the same for the second twist. Once we make this turn, the rest of the course is pretty facile. For 8-2, again, the trickiest section is the beginning. Kingpin just barely has enough room to squeeze by, so align him next to the wall, inch up, then just as we slide, hold back. Repeat that until we reach the bottom, then the rest is all good. 8-3 is quite painless, uh, in fact, the only thing worth noting are the multiple subscribe buttons scattered around the level. Upon first glance, 8-4 looks like it would give us trouble, however, we do have some counterplay. Interacting with these boost ramps will always launch us into a bunch. When we come across them, jump off the small bit of geometry past the boost to land inside the box. Following that is a slope with boost pads. If we use more than one, it will send us into a different bunch. Climb to the highest pad so it can push us safely to the top. Right at the end is a straight line with boost pads facing the opposite way, and directly above them are bananas. Literally just hold forward and short hop to avoid everything. Then jump at the top of the other ramp to reach the goal. If you happen to be a monkey ball connoisseur, five and six should be a breeze. Seven is shockingly painless. Just wait for the ball, jump over it, then move under the produce. After making the first left in eight, go full steam ahead, jump over the first set of balls, slow down to regain control, and steadily bounce into the goal. Then we quite literally kick the butt of the final boss, General Nikalsa. So technically we just beat the game, but two extra worlds get unlocked after completing the main story. The first of which, Sinking Swamp. In 9-1, there is a section in the middle with moving Jenga pieces. If we take our time during this part, then the boost ramp following it will always launch us into some nasty junk. Instead, once the timer starts, hold forward, jump at the edge of the quarter pipe, then jump two more times to avoid the blocks. Before we touch the boost, turn to the side to miss the tropical fruit. The rest can be beaten with relative ease. Now, I will show y'all the footage on how to properly clutch 9-2. It took over an hour and a half to complete, and the best strategy I have is to continually jump on the sides. Good luck! We gotta use our impeccable ninja skills in 9-3 to nimbly avert some filth lying about. 9-4 looks like a Hot Wheels track. It's a loop-de-loop -loop with two half pipes on the side. Since our starting position is directly above the goal, the most secure way to reach it is by directly descending down towards it. 9-5 is surprisingly straightforward. Just try to stay on the mossy outer edges, and if it feels too tense, just spam the A button. Nothing to really say about 9-6. Hey, post-production mod again? Your mom. <laughs> 9-7 has some rotating semicircles. Some of their panels are filled with fruit. Just as the semicircles are breaking, jump in between them to make it over safely. Once we pass, we have to make a blind jump down to the goal. Uh, be warned, the final strip also has some ivory on it. 8 is a bit of an oddball. It requires us to use the boost pads to make it around this sideways loop, but immediately following that are four bananas. My original plan was to jump over them, and when I tested this out, it didn't register the input. Upon further inspection, I found out that because of how quickly we're moving, we aren't even touching the ground when we exit. And then I realized, we could actually use this to our advantage. What if we can manipulate how we get launched by changing the direction we hold on the analog stick? We've been pushing forward the entire time, so let's get a little creative with these next few tries. Holding left gets us a lot, so that's out of the question. We avoid the bananas completely by pointing the stick to the top right. We also completely avoid the ground. But we are really close to the red edge, so how can we find a way to bounce off of that? A couple of alterations later, and a delightful scheme hatched in my head. While going around, hold the stick in the top right. But just before we're about to get launched, let go of it entirely. This puts us slightly more inwards, but if we continue to do nothing with the stick, we'll hit the corner. So right before that, flick the stick to the left to tilt the board so we can make contact with it, and that will send us skyrocketing over the four bananas directly into the last section. There is one more banana in that part, but if we don't land on it, we'll be in the clear. Lastly, 9-9. -9. Yo, watch me smurf this first try, y'all.
Easy money. And finally, the last world of the game, Ultra Heaven. 10-1 is filled with nothing but aerial halfpipes. Each contains a line of bananas in the middle, so we'll have to travel on the side. Look out for the ropes, though. They have collision, for absolutely no reason. Try to move between them, then shift back to the edge before landing. Also, don't jump too high, or else we will consume a banquet. Oh, boy, those are much easier said than done. Gongon's thickness really takes a toll on this level. It's disgustingly easy to accidentally bump into something or collect a banana. It's not impossible, although it feels like it. It took me about two hours just to get it in one go. For reference, I replayed this level as Baby, specifically for his tiny size. Although it still took many attempts, we spent only about a quarter of that time with him. 10-2 should be like eating a bag of chips. 10-3, we speed ran the whole thing, and that made me feel like a really cool dude. In 10-4, our lead actor performs a balancing act. Up next is Hell. Oh, oh, uh, it, it appears I made a mistake. That should read the sick circle of Hell. So just to get everybody on the same page, 10-5 is the most infamous stage of the entire game. Almost the entire floor is made up of bumps, so we don't have full control over our character in this one. And in a challenge where we need to be accurate... It's not a good thing, especially when there is an overabundance of the thing we are trying to avoid. If we're gonna get through this, we're gonna need a strategy, a lot of time, and a horseshoe up our ass. This level can be split up into six different sections. The first two are just a path of bumps. Continuously jump to make it over to the safe zone. Sadly, those are the most consistent parts. For the third part, jump on over. If we don't go far enough, we will smack into the pillar. Just as we land on the outer edge, turn the stick to the top left and press A to bounce in the correct way. The bananas are in the middle, so it'd be most advantageous to hop off the outer edge again. If we make it to the next path, keep on jumping across until we make it to the next safe zone. Part 4 is a pain in the gluteus. Four squares are in a straight line, and fruit will be lingering above the gaps. Start on the side, jump towards the outer edge, and, just as we land, simultaneously jump and rotate the stick to the top left. Then, quickly turn the stick to a slight top right. That should get us moving in this bizarre curve around the banana. We have to repeat this sequence flawlessly until we get to the fifth section. It's a path consisting of nothing but red bumps. These are disgustingly sharp and the most erratic to navigate. It's best to just continue jumping while crossing our fingers as we bound over to the final safe zone. Which has a banana in the center, by the way. The sixth and final section is an upward slant with boost pads and food in the middle jump along the side, and pray that we don't accidentally ricochet inside or outside as we climb our way to the goal. And with that, we have single-handedly beaten the worst level without bananas. Disclaimer, do not be an idiot like Maud and do this. You have a better chance at finding a shiny Pokemon. Really, this took him multiple days to complete. One quick glance at 10-6 was enough to fill up my pants. We have to make our way across a long, narrow path above a death plane. Not only are there multiple items on it, but it's also constantly moving. And since the only way to avoid it is by jumping, I was fearing the path would slip from underneath our feet the moment we left the ground. To my pleasant surprise, that didn't happen when testing this. In fact, it was almost like the movement wasn't affecting us at all. Really, all it did was skew the camera in this uncomfortable position. So, with enough trial and error, we can arrive at the goal. Although, one thing to note are these red patches. Every single one of them contains an invisible banana bunch, so when we cross over, be sure not to be above them. 10-7 has some cute little teacups to ride in. 10-8 has six barriers. Each of them contains a hole that we can easily access, but inside of them are bananas. There are other ways to get past them, though. For the first two, rotate so that we're facing the outside of the barrier. Hold forward and jump. Then, right as we pass it, turn inwards to land on the path. When the third one comes around, run on the left edge, then jump and turn inwards again. 
Then the fourth one. The barrier is on a thin line that oscillates back and forth, and it's too wide to make those same jumps again. I came up with one idea. We wait for the farther end to sway to the right, then just as that's happening, we build up some speed so we can jump and make it to the other side. It is extremely close, but even after countless attempts, I don't think it's actually possible to make it. As much as it kills me to say it, our key player can't beat this level. We gotta change characters. I decided to go with Yan Yan. She's smaller, a little bit faster, and jumps exceptionally high. She can pass the first three barriers effortlessly, and can actually make the jump that Gon Gon can't. But right after that lies another problem. The fifth barrier is set up like the fourth one. Unlike last time, we can't get a running start to get around. Our only option is to jump through it. Sadly, the lemur is too big for that task. The only one smaller than her is Baby. So if anyone can get the job done, it's probably gonna be him. He can undoubtedly make the first three jumps, but actually cannot make the fourth one. This sounds terrible, but we gotta remember, the toddler is tiny. So if we stand on the turning path and jump, the infant can just barely squeeze above the banana. And guess what? It also works for the next one. All we have to do is perform that twice in a row. <laughs> Which is a lot harder than it looks, so... There's gotta be an easier way to get around this. And then it hit me. Speedrunners. They can find a shortcut for everything. I came across a video made by Pease where he played the entire game as Sonic. In 10-8, he makes this useful skip that takes him directly in front of the fifth barrier. Yes, we can use this so that there's only one of them to deal with. Question is, can Baby even make this jump? He can! Perfect, perfect! Okay, now all we need to do is properly land on it. Good, good, good. Let's align ourselves. Then make the jump. Oh, thank goodness. We swooshed right in. Now we can get to the goal and play the final level, 10-9. It only took like three tries. God, that was pathetic. And with that, we are done. So adding up all of the normal courses, bonus stages, and boss battles will equal 100 levels. And out of those levels, 98 can be completed without collecting bananas as Gon Gon. <gasps> Our protagonist cannot overcome the painstaking challenges of 6-7 and 10-8. Yet, his efforts were astronomically legendary. As his honorable reward, he shall be featured in the thumbnail. But in total, 99 can be completed without collecting bananas. 6-7 does not give us enough time, and therefore is the only level that cannot be accomplished under this rule set. 99% of this game is beatable without bananas. You know, I am pleasantly surprised with how well we performed. We deserve a uh, round of applause. Yeah, thanks for sticking around for this long. It really does mean a lot to me. It means, uh, you know, I'm making a good video. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope your day is going well. Welcome to the outro. So yeah, I just wanted to try out a different series. I do have a couple of ideas, like for Crash Bandicoot, Battle Block Theater, even the Pokemon Stadium games. Not to say that, you know, I'm not doing Sonic anymore, but you know, just have a little bit of variety on this channel, you know? I'm really just hoping that the algorithm doesn't immediately shut me down when I do something that isn't Sonic related, like you know what I'm saying? Henceforth, I wanted to try out this monkey ball video to test stuff out. Which, by the way, I am was not expecting the first half of the game to be piss easy like this. <laughs> that kind of says a lot about Banana Blitz. So, believe it or not, I actually do have enough stuff for the obligatory Neat Things video. And I may or may not do a review of this game. If I can figure out a way to describe my feelings toward it clearly, then I will do it, but if not, then we will immediately go to the next thing, which is like another Sonic-related thing. I haven't completely decided on what I wanted to do yet. So, yeah, good night.
or good morning, goodbye, hope you're having, have a good day, bye-bye.